All right, welcome to part two of our melody video. Last time we learned how to create a melody, and this time we're gonna learn how to edit a melody, specifically editing MIDI, writing MIDI, and quantizing MIDI, which are those little files that save the information of what you played so it can play it back to you. First things first, let's go ahead and hear what we did last time, and then we'll hop right in. And I have to do some editing. A few things happened. My timing was off on some of them and I completely missed a note as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit that pencil button at the bottom right corner. And here I can actually see my MIDI. I can see every single note that I played when I played it and it'll play it back to me exactly like that. Mistakes and all. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna show you how to do is just create a note. I'm missing a note here. I meant to play an E right there. Some of you are thinking, but it's clutch, bro, don't change it. Well, I want it the way I want it, so I'm just gonna tap that box where that E is missing, and it's there. Now, the next thing I need to do is fix my timing. Look at that note, that D right there, it's pathetic. It's not even on the line correctly. In order to fix the timing, all I have to do is hold this down and highlight. So now all these notes are highlighted. So what I'm gonna do is tap on any of these notes. So there's four different icons here that are really important. We have the copy icon, which allows us to just copy this entire section, this entire region, and later on paste it somewhere else. We have the trash icon, which is of course to throw it away, delete it completely. We have the hear icon, which lets us play back those sounds. And we have the letter Q. I'm gonna tap Q. Now Q stands for quantizing, and quantizing basically assigns each of these MIDI notes to one of the vertical lines on this rhythmic grid. It's super helpful because it keeps every instrument we create in sync. Q for quantizing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose one out of 16, and the reason I choose that option is because each of these beats is divided into four boxes. So if there's four beats in a bar, and there's four boxes per beat, well, that's a total of 16 little boxes per bar. And we talked about that in our drum beat video. But I want these things to line up to these little boxes, so I'll choose one out of 16. Bam! And you can see they all shifted. I'll do that again. Here we go, here we go. Are you ready for it? Bam! Now they're all corrected. I'll go ahead and hit that check mark in the bottom right corner. And now all my notes are in the right place. If any of them is in the wrong place, though, I can always grab it and drag it. But it looks like everything is good. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this window by touching the arrow in the top right corner. Close this one as well. And now you can see my notes are here. Of course, if I want to loop all of this, I can just grab this and shorten it all the way down to bar five where it ends. And then I can click it and hit that little swirly refresh looper sign and bam, it loops the whole thing just like that. And now I have eight beautiful bars of my drum beat with my xylophone instead of just four. Hit that check mark and we're good to go. Now for those of you who are editing a verse and don't wanna do a lot of editing, let me show you a cool trick. You see that cue at the top right corner? That inconspicuous cue? That cue is super, super cool because what that is is input quantization. Input quantization means that instead of me having to go back and edit everything afterwards, it'll actually quantize or assign my MIDI to the right rhythms as I play in real time. That way the recorded product is already correct and I don't even have to do all that editing work that I just did. It's pretty crazy. So I'm gonna turn on that cue, input quantization on. Let's go. And I'm gonna try this one more time. I'm gonna completely delete this. I hate it. Double tap my xylophone and record. All right, and now when I hit that pencil button, you're gonna see that everything is perfectly in a box. They're not overlapping on any of the lines the way they were last time. So it quantized it, it corrected it, fixed it as I was playing. It's pretty amazing that a software on your phone can do this. And of course, I'm just gonna go ahead and shorten this to bar five again, just like I did, and loop it. Boop. 
All right, so we have our melody created. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out. I just wanna remind you that you can always mute an instrument. If you click S, however, you can solo it, which means even if you have a, you know 15 different instruments, you can just listen to that one right there. You can also adjust the volume of the instrument so that they're more balanced. For example, making the xylophone quieter than the drums. You can click those three dots in order to delete an instrument or rename it. Beautiful. And you can also pan it left and right, as in put it in one ear and not the other. Check it out. If you're wearing headphones, you should hear this in only your left ear. Spicy. One final tip, if you decide that you actually don't like the instrument you originally chose for your melody, you can double click it and click that music note on the bottom left corner That'll allow you to actually change the instrument to a completely different one. So this time I'll go to keyboards, airy keys. And now when I press play, it'll play the exact same melody and rhythm, but with a new instrument sound. All right, everybody, that's all for today. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you in the next video.